entrepreneurial, visionary people are the most easily distracted Easy. people in the world. Okay, they try to do everything. Try and do everything because it all seems so good. So you've got to stay in a lane. I have a business coach. I have a spiritual coach. Yeah. I have a mental coach. And I have a physical coach. I work out with him every single morning at 6 o'clock. Mm. I got a coach for everything. There's people who are going to be in our lives that are we don't need to make them wrong. But they're going to want to play it a little bit more in the traditional box. Then they may, they may not see or they want to maybe because it might scare them to do what you're doing. They might want to guard you, caution you, pull you back from that. If you live in your passion and you can make money, it's a bonus. Yes. But if you go out there and make a lot of money and you hate your job, it's the worst thing that can happen to you. the concept kickstarter podcast today i have a guest uh touch and stefan we're here to help you out welcome stefan please yes thank you we're super excited to be here welcome touch please. welcome welcome so you know before we dive in uh let me just take a second just to get them uh a little familiar yeah. with my journey and then maybe you can share a little bit about your journey yeah. on uh you know what we do together at springboard as a company then after that we can dive in and start talking about what they got to do to get ready to make millions. Millions, 2024. Right? Millions, right? 2024, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right? So yeah. for a lot of you guys who don't know me, um, I'm uh, a refugee from Vietnam. My family left Vietnam in 1975. I was born in 1970. I was about five years old. Yeah. And I left Vietnam in 1975. My dad worked for the U.S. military, and we were very fortunate to fly out on the last plane with the U.S. troop. Um, and then when we came over here, you know, we had one suitcase, a hundred dollars to our name and we lived in a shelter and, you know, this is why I think a lot of people can relate because, you know, I wasn't born rich. I came from another country, came over here with a family of eight, a four brother and a sister and, you know, one suitcase for eight of us. And, um, we was living in a shelter. We came over from Vietnam. And then from there, we got housing later on. And we, my dad found a little two bed and one bath house mm -hmm. in Seattle. Um, and, you know, basically uh, my dad was the only one who was working. And my mom would stay home mom. And then my dad became a social worker. And, um, you know, eight of us living in a two bedroom house. And uh, from there, um, you know, I went to school. I graduated from uh, high school. I went off to college. And I followed my brother's footsteps to fix aviation airplane, but it was my passion. Yeah. So tip number one, make sure you do and follow your passion. Watch you know, as a immigrant family, immigrant family sometimes want their kids to do what they wish they could have done themselves. Yes. <laughs> damn it. You I could have never been a goddamn doctor, <laughs> but damn it, I got you over here. You're going to be a goddamn doctor. <laughs> That'll be the snitch it, right? <laughs> And I think that, you know, respectfully saying to a lot of the parents out there, I know sometimes all of us wish we were the doctor, the lawyer, but we didn't make it. And, you know, we really got to let our kids do what's passionate for them. Yes. If they want to play basketball, they're only two feet tall, whatever. whatever. Let them find out they can't make it later. You know what I mean? Yeah. But whatever it is, their passion, let them. Because I think, you know, if you live in your passion and you can make money, it's a bonus. Yes. But if you go out there and make a lot of money and you hate your job, it's the worst thing that can happen to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so um, I got into real estate in 1991. I became a realtor. And then from there, I met a lot of mentors that taught me how to sell real estate, mm -hmm. save my money, buy real estate, flip houses, build houses, and ultimately the end, just own a lot of real estate. Because when you own a lot of real estate, that's how you become a multi, 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 multi millionaire. And you can work whenever you want to work, where you want to work. And which bring me to today is today, that's been my journey. And I want to teach more, more people, especially the minority all across the world, that if I can do it, you can do it on how to actually make money, work hard, 
save your money, go buy real estate. And that's how my company called Springboard to Wealth came to existence. And then this is my partner, Stephanie, and said, well, you share with them a little bit about your background and then what we do, and then we'll kick it off. All right. Yes. Yeah, so similar to um, you guys, I come from very humble beginnings myself. And what I found though, was that even though we didn't have a lot fin like financially or materially, there was always a lot of love and happiness in our home. And so there didn't have to be one or the other. My parents did a great job of providing what they could, even though it was more, it wasn't, it was all that I wanted, but they were always like, be educated, get an education. And so that was my path toward a more, a brighter future. From that, I went on and I was a therapist and a performance coach. And so learning how to take what we know about how, how we function as people, how do we optimize our performance by getting untrapped from the, the ways that we can tangle ourselves up and create tripping hazards of our own making to sabotage our success. And so that really brought to when Thatch and I started working together knowing that we can find not only the skill set for how to be successful, but the mindset to be successful and what informs our mission, which is to create millions of happy millionaires. Yes. Because you cannot have any money and be happy. Yep. You can have a lot of money and not be happy, or you can have some money and be happy. Yes. And so we're looking for that well-rounded approach to both joy and abundance in every form. And nice. that's our mission. That's really good. And I just want to add on to touch what he said. Like when I came to this country, my dad always said, oh, I want you to be a nurse. It's job security. Like everyone in life, as you said, we need to follow our passion and we need to fall really diligently learning. If you say you want to be a greatest accountant, find the people around you who are greatest accountant. You can learn different skills from them. Because for me, when I came to this country, my dad wanted me really to be a nurse. And he bought for me a big book like this. <laughs> After like if one, I think two, one or two semesters, he found out I was not doing nursing courses. Then he realized, what are you doing? I was doing accounting because I fell in love doing accounting. And I promised him one promise is that I'll make sure I get a job in accounting. And I know people here say there is no job security in accounting, that here when we come as immigrants, we need to be in healthcare, always they need nurses, always they need doctors. And I told him, no. One thing with our show, I'll surround myself with the greatest people who can help me achieve my vision. And that vision of passion, as you, you, you say, touch, it's like, follow your passion, follow your vision, have a vision, Get surround yourself with the people who can support you on your vision. Like for me to scale in what I'm doing to help, help different communities, I've surrounded myself with touch and Stefan, because I know they are good people. They can educate you more. They can help you leverage more in understanding what you're doing in, in investing in real estate and also changing your mental thinking of how you see life. You know, I have personal and we also have a company mm -hmm. that we're looking at. You know what I mean? For personal, you know, I'm 53 years old, yeah. right? And what I'm doing right now is I am actually doing something a little more advanced, mm -hmm. but I'm going to tell what the audience, uh, what I'm saying. For me, I'm 53 years old and the next five to seven years from now, it's going to be my prime year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cause I'll be 60, right? 53, seven, I'll be 60. 60. I'm a, and now until 60, it's going to be my prime year. This is what I learned from my mentor. Mm -hmm. So I really want to make sure that I really do everything I don't need to do because by the time I'm 60, I really want to sit back and I want to take it easy. I still be owner of Springboard. I'll be collaborating. I'll be talking. But right now I run probably, you know, at, you know, 100 miles an hour. I'm okay with that. I don't mind working. I love to work. But when I get to 60, I want to run about 45 miles an hour, right? And still be effective. Mm -hmm. So for me right now, I'm doing right now, I'm sitting down and I look at all my, all the part of my life. I look at my physical life. Matter of fact, let me pull this up. Mm -hmm. How are we doing this? This is my 2033 10-year letter. This is, it hasn't even happened yet. Yes. So I'm updating this right now. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm writing a letter right now oh. at 60 years old, right? In these aspects of my life, mm. where is my physical at 60 years old? Where would my life be at 60 in physical? Mm. Well, I keep planning on working out every day and eating good so I can stay young. Yeah. Where would my life be at, right? 60 years now on my mindset side, right? Now, I know if I let my mindset get sloppy and not sharp, everything else is going to fall apart. Definitely. So I got to keep that mindset sharp like a knife. 
Where's my spiritual life going to be at? Where's my relationship life with my family and my kids going to be at time I'm 60? How old are my kids then? What am I doing with them? Mm. Am I traveling with them? Am I teaching them? Are they working with me? What am I doing, right? What's the, my personal career like? What's my real estate portfolio like? What is Springboard and Steph and I be, be like, right? Finances, fun. And then what does giving back look like? at 60. So what I'm doing, I'm standing at 60 and I'm looking back all the way till 2030, 2024. So some people, if you're new to this, you should write standing at December 31st, 2024 mm -hmm. and write a letter to yourself and describe, I'm sorry, 34. 34. Yeah. No, 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 I'm saying for the new people who are that advanced, I don't want them to do 10 year out. No, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would like to see somebody new the first time writing this, ask yourself, it's December 31st, 2024. Yeah. Where are you at in these aspects? Mentally, physically. Me mentally, physically, spiritually, uh, family. Yes. And we're going to go through all this, yes. right? Where are you going to be at? Mm. Because if you don't actually set and declare where you want to be at, at the end of the year, what specifically physical, mental, spiritual, family, relationship, career, then you're going to live by default, mm -hmm. going from here, and then it just be another year wasted. Yes. So I'm doing a 10-year picture, not even a one-year picture, because I want to write down by design yes. at 60, and then look back all the way five years and all the way to 2024, and then now all you got to do is just walk it. Make sense? And so it's important that either you can live like by design, or you can live by the default. A default. So there has to be a roadmap. That's like it. This roadmap which you follow and you're like, I'm here at A, I'm going to B, and that roadmap is designed by certain principles, like the ways you have financially, That's mentally, it. family, it. how do you give back to community? Because all these have a social impact into your life That's and right. all these give value of growth into your life. Yes. All these open new great doors for you to succeed and continue with that roadmap. That's right. What do you think, Stefan? I think you guys are speaking to some really important core things and they really come back to the idea of how do we make sure that our goals are connected to the things that are priorities, the pa be passionate about it. It's easy to make goals that are um, what we think other people think our goals should be, yes. but to make sure first and foremost that there's the clarity of what am I going for so we can step into that reality. It's a big deal. That is a really That's big deal. That's probably the most important thing. I mean, anybody we have spent time with, yep. you know, and we spend time with people that actually make $100 million. And even them don't even know why they do what they're doing. Yeah. They're kind of just finding their way from sheer talent. For me, like in this trip, uh, sorry to interject, Stefan, is that uh, I, one of the first things which I was blessed this morning is that how he does construction. Uh -huh. Like for me, I, I was like in my mind, I make it beautiful as I feel like. Yeah. No, it is, has to be by design, but not by default how my feeling I wake up today and I feel like spending 10 grand and I spend 10 grand. It has to be like, okay, what can be implemented 10 years from now? That's right. And it can be just tweaked a bit to reach the standard. Yeah, like the way how I designed and built my building you saw today, I did it by design knowing the end game. Yes. The end game, I'm renting it. Yes. Who is my demographic renting to? Mm. And then I make sure that I put the finishing in that's aligned to the end game. And we should all do that with our life. Yeah. We should ask ourselves, what is the end of 2024 look like? Yeah. Physical, mental, spiritual, career, money. And then let's build the map going towards that end game. And this is what Stephanie talked exactly to you. Exactly right. It's that clarity right. of if I know what my end game is, then I've got that point on the horizon that I can be reaching toward. And every decision I make is, is this moving me closer to mm. or farther away from that? Right. But if we don't have that, that North Star, that compass that we can use as a guide, then we can just end up getting distracted and pulled yeah, all over Most the people are building their life like building a house. Definitely. Right? Yeah. Throw that sink in there. Yeah. I like that right there. Put that somewhere out in there. Right? Mentally, Stefan, let me ask you this. You, you're looking at someone like 2023, they, it has been a hurdle for them. Like things are coming like left, right. And they are like, I need to get ready for 2024. What advice do you have for them? I think it's a great question, Brian, because this highlights something that is a real surprise for a lot of people when it comes to setting their goals mm -hmm. is that they're only looking forward. 
there is a really important step before you even start deciding what am I going to set myself to accomplish in 2024 is to take a moment, pause, be still and ponder how far you've come. This is such an important pl- the, an important thing to do because we can get so fixated on how far we have to go. It can be overwhelming. It can be overwhelming. And it can start bringing up the, the mindset doubts, the fear, doubt, worry, worry, and concern. I can't do that. I, can't I'm, do I'm, that. I know. My, I just got That's my ass kicked recently. Yeah. Like, how's that going to work out? And then we get way out and the anxiety creeps in and then we retract back to right. the old patterns. Right. But when we first, if we take a look and go, okay, How on the journey from where you are to where you want to be, where you started to where you want to be, look at how far you've come. Look at the the distance and the lessons that you've learned in that distance. So there's a couple of key things that are helpful to kind of get people's wheels turning on that. Before they write about before you write about where you want to go forward. Mm -hmm. Take a moment and ask yourself just even to notice, man, how far have I come? What are the three things I've accomplished in this past year or in my life that I'm the most proud of? What is something that I know today that I didn't know a year ago that has meant the most to me? What are the things in my life that are true right now? What are 10 things that I can deeply appreciate about what's already good in my life right now? And that puts us in a place to both recognize your strengths yeah calm down it's all it's you you have come a distance you are better maybe off than you think let's give ourselves credit for how far we've come let's take a moment to appreciate what is already good and you notice what are the strengths it took me to get from here to there what kind of character have i shown and grown and built what are the lessons that i've learned along the way because then we're looking forward to the future through the lens of capacity through the lens of abundance, through the through the lens of, I'm already kind of a little bit going here. We're through the momentum of what we've accumulated, and then take that momentum and then start thinking about the next steps of our future. Yeah, yeah. For me, is everybody get their ass kicked mm-hmm. once in a while on the journey. Different into. And if you keep trying to stack more stuff on your plate, mm. and you come from a place of not grateful mm. is just feel like it's more the same. Mm. Why am I going to go set more go? I'm going to get my ass kicked again. Mm-hmm. And I love it. What Stephanie's saying that before you start writing new go, let's step back and look and go reflect back. Yeah. I'm glad. Like I told Stephanie this other day, Brian, I said, everybody has their own journey. And this was a gratitude that I did the other day. And I was like, damn, man, got me just still, still today, like almost in tears. That, you know, I didn't realize I have a certain natural talent. And I think everybody got a talent. Mm-hmm. Everybody got a talent. Mm-hmm. My talent happened to just be someone who got a good mouthpiece. Yeah. Lots of energy. Who would have thought that today my business is all on social media? Yes. Right? The media. But you think about this, Brian. Everybody gets skill, but on top of skill, you need luck and timing. That's true. Do you know, Brian, that in 1975, when I was five years old, my dad was a translator and he worked for the U.S. government. Mm. The U.S. government decided to actually pull out of Vietnam to go back. And the boss says to my dad, why don't you take your family and come with us? Mm-hmm. And my dad said, yes. yes. I got back to Vietnam at least 10 times now to where we used to live. If the boss and the dad never agree, I will be still in Vietnam, just like you could be still be in where you're at. Mm-hmm. And I would have never met Stephanie. Yes. Spring World wouldn't exist. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, I, but that was a timing in the luck then I met a real estate mentor named Mike Ferry, a mentor named Saul. Then I met Lorenz to social media. Then I met Stephanie. So when I started looking out, looking back, all the great timing and stuff that got me where I'm at today, it put me in a place of gratitude. Like, ah, okay. Well, I did get my ass kicked a few times on that yeah. journey, but you know what? But I still came out of it, but I'm still farther than get. And then I gave up. 
and I think what Stephanie is saying is that all of us, right, we all good, we all, we go, we're going to get our ass kicked on the journey, yeah. but it ain't every day. Mm -hmm. But I think that just looking back to see, look how many timing, bro, that got you where you at today. Definitely. Right? Yeah. One, one bad timing would have actually, you could have never been here right now. Definitely. Right? Definitely. So I think all of us got something to look at and you put us, to, put us up in a state of gratitude and appreciation. And so from there, now go and create something new. Uh -huh. Now you're not bringing the past into the future no more. Yes. Exactly. Like you do that, you leave the past in the past. And even just the, if you're listening to this right now, yeah. you've somehow a timing has occurred. Oh, 100%. Like this, yeah. is, this is not a coincidence. No. This is serendipity. Yeah. And so like if you're hearing this message, there's a reason why. Yeah. And so the timing, this is a sign of good timing. Yeah. The fact that you're in this conversation means this is a step of how far you've come. Yes. You're putting yourself in the way of conversations and who you're surrounding yourself with and who you're being led by to then do something different than maybe where you came yeah. from or what you've even accomplished to this. Yeah, point. if you watching this, you were meant to watch this. Yes. Yes. You understand? You were meant to watch this. Yep. And if you're meant to be there, that means you're meant to be successful. Period. <laughs> Touch, let me ask you something. I know you work closely with your family. Yes, uh, very, in, close. Uh, very close. Very close. In, in business. There's someone out there is saying, like, I have a sister or I have a husband or a wife. Yep. I want to, to do something with them. Yep. I want to, to scale. I want to grow with yep. my family. Yep. So what advice do you give them? Because now they, they are looking at 2023. They worked independently, having an independent soul. Now they are like, oh, it cannot work by just being me alone in this. I need to get some people to be part of my life, to scale, to grow, to make difference in, in people, other people's lives. So... Uh, how advise us on this, please? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell you mine. I definitely also can share because she has her, her family working with her also. Yes. Mm -hmm. I learned from a mistake. Never answer a question when a question isn't asked. Yes. <laughs> and let me tell you what I mean by that. Let me, let me tell you what I mean. Yes. See, my family at the beginning, yeah. when I was just coming up doing real estate, mm. they wasn't raising their hand and asking, brother. I want to do real estate with you. They never asked. Yes. What I used to do, I used to answer the question, but the question was never asked. And the question I used to answer was, you should do real estate, you should do real estate, you should do real estate, you should do real estate with me. Yes. I can make you rich like me. Mm. And then all my brothers and sisters were like, <laughs> I don't want to be part of this. I don't want to be part of anything you're talking about, brother. Yeah. And so what I realized, the first thing I realized, never answer a question that, that the question has been asked. Yes. Meaning don't volunteer to tell them what to do. Yes. The best thing we can do is always lead by example. Today, I just go out there and I just go do that. Mm. I'll be the inspiration. I'm full of knowledge. I share. I do, I do everything. I get example. Right? I do what I do. And then I inspire them by being me. And all of a sudden they ask like this. Brother, brother. <laughs> I was wondering, the next thing you know, later on, the year later, brother, now they're like this. Yes. So the best advice I can tell you is go be you. Go be successful. Yes. Go walk the walk, walk the talk, eat, whatever, make money, do whatever you do, be successful. Let them come. Right? You know the, the whole movie called Build the Field and They Will Come, right? Feel the dreams. Feel the dreams. Yeah. Right? This one says... Go be a millionaire and watch everybody follow you, mm -hmm. right? And that's the tip I will give them. How are you, what tip will you give them? Because your family work with you now. Yeah, very much. I think it's exactly. I can tell you, I can see that you tell Rachel, um, you should do this, Rachel. Oh, yeah, she would super <laughs> listen to me. Yeah, yeah. She's, and that's the thing of, uh, because we want to work with our family doesn't mean that that's their passion. That's yes. right. Right? Yeah. So like, if we let, you need to let them follow their passion. I like that passion. version now which you're sharing with us. Yes. So like, and it's okay. Let mm -hmm. them, but to inspire by being the best of being the best you. That's right. It inspires them to be the best them. Right. And so giving space for their, for them to kind of pursue their own path, maybe it's working together, but sometimes we get so excited about the idea that the people we love the most can come alongside and do this thing with us. We have to stop and ask ourselves, does that fit their skill set? And is that their own passion? Is that their passion? Are we just, we, uh, would you hire that person to do this job if they were not your cousin? Right. Mm. Right. So do they have the skill set? Do they have the passion for it? And to not force it. Just not, just don't force it.
But be the inspiration and then you'll become a magnet and the right people will show up with perfect. But that's how life should be though. Exactly. Right? That's how I'm doing it right now. The reason why you're here, because I've been leading by example. You saw me, yeah. you come to the seminar, now you're here. Yes. We should all do that for ourselves. The problem is we don't do shit and we try to teach something. Yes. That's like most gurus. <laughs> and the other thing which I added to that touch, like why even I'm here, guys, it's that I showed up for myself. Yes, you did, uh, sir. Pe people are out there and they're saying, I want to change my life. I yes. want to do great. The number one other thing, show up for yourself. The moment you show up for yourself, the opportunity shows That's up. Right. The moment you show up for yourself, the knowledge shows up for itself. Like, show up, show up, show up, show up. Because if you don't show up, the opportunity will never show up. Just kidding. Yeah. So to just to clarify, so... We're, when when we're looking at what we would tell our students, we would not quant would, wouldn't segment it just to their financial or real estate goals. We are looking for the whole person, that well-rounded right. person. All the equity. Because sometimes maybe for somebody to achieve their real estate goals, they first need to take better care of themselves spiritually. Maybe or mentally. Order, or mentally. Or they need to make sure that they're not adding one more thing that, but while sacrificing their families, right? So we want, the thing that I think we would say, and that you're, you'll obviously um, be able to chime in well here, is that we look at that, the, the categories you already mentioned. Mm -hmm. We look at the, we call it the eight equities. It's a sphere that is, slices life into these eight key elements. We want people looking at every aspect of their life and looking at what's their level of satisfaction in each of those slices. Mm -hmm. And then from there, they can begin to notice where, where's maybe the spot when they look at this that they hadn't even noticed that maybe the fun category has just gone unattended to. Mm -hmm. Maybe they haven't noticed that their career path or their finances or their relationship with their family is suffering. Mm -hmm. So again, this is about pausing and getting still and being conscious about where am I at? How far have I come? Mm -hmm. But let's look at the whole pie. Let's look at the whole pie. And so that's one of the tools we love to use. And we call, we call it the eight equities. It's this circle and it's chopped into these eight sections, the categories that Thatch mentioned before. And the idea is that we want to take a look at each one of them. And on a scale of one to 10 rank, how satisfied are you according to what you want? Mm -hmm. Not someone else's definition of what you should want. It's custom. Yes, exactly. It's a custom fit wheel that is on a scale of one to 10 in finances. Mm -hmm. How satisfied are you? Not how far, how far to your goal are you? How far, how satisfied are you? Um, or, and then how satisfied are you with health and physical? How satisfied are you with fun and family? Like those, and look around each one of these and see. Then you kind of get a look at your whole life in this wheel and you'll see, oh boy, this, I, well, maybe I want a nice smooth reel, but this thing's bumpy. Yeah. This thing's a little bit of a mess. This is, so no wonder your journey might feel a little haphazard and a little bumpy because your wheels are messed up. Right. So if that should be yeah, from, from this. there, then you can ask yourself, let's say this wheel in the center is zero and the end is 10. Let's say they need, uh, once you take a look at the wheel, you go, oh my God, I got all this energy and focus on my business and career. I'm like a seven, but my health is like a three. My wife and kids is like a two. You know what I mean? Spiritual, I'm a zero, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Then we ask yourself, okay, if you are a seven, right? What would what do you need to do in 2024 to make it an eight or a nine? Yes. And then you do the same, you ask the same question for all the other category. Mm -hmm. If I'm a one with my family, what you know, what can I do? in 2024 to actually get it up to at least a three or four. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Now you can have a, you have a little background on what you're trying to accomplish. The problem is we don't even see this. Mm -hmm. And they're like, let me put more on my plate. Let me do more <laughs> on my plate, right? Like you keep on loading. Like for example, I'll, I'll add on this recently. I was looking at uh, some properties which I was trying to buy. And uh, one of my close friends was uh, wanted to buy more, buy more, buy more. Right. And, and, and then we had a conversation. I was asking him, why are you just buying right now? Right. Good question. Uh, what, what is the goal of this buying you are doing? Because, right. you know, some, some people, when they have a hundred K in their pocket, they're like, what should I buy? Right. Yes. Now? Yeah. Instead of looking, okay, what is my structure? What I have in existence already. Yeah. And what am I going for? You find someone doing like four days at the same time. Yes. Some of them go out to the wind. Some right. of them, uh, they lose money on the depot. Right. Some of them. So 
in the, the the way you define it, it's really clear. It like you need to know where your will is. That's right. Uh, are you fully financially structured into for that will to continue moving? That's right. Yes. Are you fully aligned with the mission which you are trying to accomplish? Of like, for example, you talk about uh, how many units do you need That's to right. live your life. Your life. Yeah. So that brings me also to a question which I wanted to ask you. I remember when you were starting uh, yep. from your story is that. You bought a couple of properties which you work towards paying off. Can That's you right. share with yep. us that experience? Yeah, so for example, like if we were talking about 2024, right? When I first started, I had zero, right? Yes. In the world of, let's call it rental finances. And so my goal was, you know what I mean? Was, you know, one year I wanted to buy at least one or two houses. Mm -hmm. And then my goal was to buy one or two or two or three year, year, year you know, and on and on. And on. Mm -hmm. And so I set the goal. I was like, all right, if I'm at zero by the end of the year, I like to have at least one or two. Now I have a goal. Yes. But that goal sits inside a bigger goal. And the bigger goal was like this. So my mentor said to me, at what age, I'm 21, uh, I'm 21 when he said that to me, at what age do you want to have the option to work or not work? Right? And I was like, okay. And then I was like, well, you know, I'm 21. I just started the real estate business. You know, if I give myself 20, 20 years, right? I get enough money. I say, you know, if I had, if I was at 40 or 45, if I, if I had the option of working at work, that'd be great. He said, great. Then he asked me, how much passive income do you think you need every month to live comfortably? And the key word, if you're debt free. And I was like, wow, if I'm debt free, I have no, yeah. no payment every month. How much? And I said, you know, if I had like, Twelve to fifteen thousand a month, I could be good. I could be good, yeah. Then he said, "Okay, great. What's the average rent?" And the average rent was fifteen hundred bucks mm -hmm. in nineteen ninety two or three, something like that. Mm -hmm. He said, "Well, you want fifteen thousand? Average rent fifteen thousand hundred. You're gonna need ten houses. The goal is now is to have ten houses bought and paid off by the time you're forty five. Forty five, yeah. Right. So now inside my one year goal, my goal is to actually buy two. For what reason? To have 15 by 45. Yes. So my goal was first year, buy two. Second year, buy two. Third year, buy three or four because I made more money. Mm. To get to a point where I can buy ha half 15 and pay them off by the time I'm 45. So I have literally 24 years to do th this process. Mm. And then I put on my running shoes and I started working and I made a lot of money. I just bought, bought one, bought two, bought three, bought four, bought five. And I bought enough, and I said, no more. Pay down, pay down, pay down, pay down, pay down. And so that was my goal. So this is why when Stephanie said, it is a bigger picture yeah. than just a one year. Because I know most of the people in uh, our communities, like uh, they, they come and buy real estate and they get excited to real estate. Like they get that attachment of like making a decision. Today, I'm going to buy this one. You know, every property looks good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it, it, even the ugly one look like this, look good. Right. <laughs> How do you take away that from your mindset and look at real estate in a different way? Like you don't just get excited to eat, but you, 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 you have a way how you guys look. You got you to gotta have an end game. Tell them about that. You have to have an end game. That means what is what is that point in the future that I'm that I'm moving to? Like Thatch was describing in his example, I want 15 doors. Mm -hmm. And we know that what do you want those 15 doors to do for you? I want to have the freedom to work or not work. Mm -hmm. And so every decision you make is aligned to is this is this going to move me closer to or further away from that end game? And if we're consistently doing things that are outside of the the, the path that gets us there, then that's why we have to have who we surround ourselves with is so important. The mentors we have, the conversations, to have somebody who will be like, dude, your decisions make no sense. Yeah. And to be able to then get us back on track and back on track yeah, and because back if on you, track. Because if, if you, if I had to go to do 15, which I did, I had to go to do 15 on this journey making money, I was approached by a lot of people, hey, Dad, you want to invest in this this uh, business? Mm -hmm. You know, that at that time back then, there was, there was business where you can uh, go plate a lot of the accessory in your car. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dad, you know what? I want to open up a business. I want you to invest, you know, we can make good money. And guess what happened? I wasn't super clear. And I went and spent $200,000 with this business and I lost it. I could have bought so many more houses with that $250,000. But at least I had a goal to go there. But I learned this. When the clear you are at 15 and this is your priority, 
if anybody come up and ask you to do anything else that's not going to help you achieve that goal, if you do it, you're just distracting your money, your time, your energy somewhere else. And a lot of times you lose money and time. And at the very least, then you're making that decision consciously. Yes. You're going like, no, I'm going to choose to ignore my actual goal and I'm going to go waste some time over here. But at least you're going to do it consciously. Yes. Most people do that unconsciously. That's right. They don't have the, the end game or they don't consistently keep their eyes on that prize. And so then this other thing comes up and they go, oh, shiny beads. Right. And ambitious people, entrepreneurial, visionary people are the most easily distracted Easy. people in the world. Okay, they try to do everything. Try and do everything because it all seems so good. So you've got to stay in a lane. And that's the, so like, that's kind of the, as we're thinking to, how do we take these great ideas we have, mm. even if we're looking at our wheel and we're going, okay, here's where my level, level of satisfaction, what's something I can do to improve that thing? We need to have a mechanism to keep us focused yeah. on that work as we're continuing to move forward. Because yeah. it's easy to go back to old habits. It's easy to go back to old patterns or to get distracted by the shiny objects that come along. So as we then have this circle and we go, okay, I'm a three here, I'm a seven here, I'm a nine here, I'm a whatever. Then the, the second step of that is to then say, as Thatch was saying, what's one, maybe two things I could do in each area? Not a whole list. Not a whole list. Keep this clear and simple. What is one thing I could do in each of those areas that would move me closer to my overall end game? That what, what is one thing I could do in each of these areas? So you make a list of that. Then even that is too much because we tend to spread ourselves way too thin and we don't focus enough on any one thing to get enough traction to really get to the end, to the end, to the finish line, which is why then so many people get frustrated with themselves that they don't accomplish things. But when we accomplish things, it energizes, it gets that dopamine hit and we get that, that we get psyched and we begin to see our possibilities and build confidence. So we got to pick. So of all these, let's say you have each one of these eight equities. You've got one thing from each of those areas. Now pick two. two. What are the two, when you look at these, that are the most, that fit your priorities, that move you closer to that end game, that fit your passion? Pick two. Those are the two key goals for your year. Mm -hmm. That is all that's going on in 2024. Yes. And as soon as you get done with that, you can pick the next two. Yes. Right. So the, also, I want to answer your question. Also, do that. Mm -hmm. Right. That's simple. And part of the decision also is that, you know, if you're chasing out this goal and these are the two things you got to do, is buying a piece of real estate that you have no idea. It doesn't cash flow. It doesn't. It isn't a great investment. Is that part of a priority? Exactly. See. So every decision is like 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 I took you to the house today. Yes, please. Every decision. See, the thing is, you have to know how the house looks like before you get done. Mm -hmm. We call that the, the architect design, the feature. Here's what it looks like you get done. That's the end game. So, and then what happened is that we got to ask ourselves, mm -hmm. um, since I'm keeping it, since people are going to get 15 houses to get passive income, every decision you make has to line up to that. Look, since I'm keeping that property, the window maker decision has a line up to that. The faucet, the sink, sink. the floor, the countertop, the backsplash, even the shower pan. Even every uh, one of them had to add up to that end game. Yeah. And that's the problem with people. They don't even have an end game, so they never have anything to actually pick. So they just run it, they're building a life blind. Yes. Thank you for that. Because like I was even there just when you talked about the white windows. Yes. I was like, I love black windows, but now he's talking about white windows. Yeah. Now he's changing my mindset. That's right. And there was an end goal to that when you chose. If That's right. Because I'm clear in the end game of everything I do. And I always design and build and live life by uh, design to match up to the end game. And life should be the same way. Yes. Personal life and business life. But most people don't live like that. Yes. See what I mean? They live their life. They just build it. And when they get there, they go, why am I not happy? Yes. Do you, do you think like uh, when people are building that end game uh, as we're entering 2024, someone has to get a mentor? How? Well, let me say it like this. If you don't know what you don't know, yes. But I got a mentor. Seth and I, we have a coach yes. that we hire to help run Framework. Mm. We have a business coach that we hire that's going to help us scale Framework. Mm. I have a 
business coach. I have a spiritual coach. Yeah. I have a mental coach. And I have a physical coach. I work out with him every single morning at 6 o'clock. Mm. I got a coach for everything. Because here's what I know. One, if I want to improve, I need to have somebody teach me something different. Different than what? Number two, support what I'm doing. Mm. Number three, right? See things that I don't see that they can call me out. Yo, bro, you know, uh, the way you're doing that right there with Springboard right there, you know, uh, that ain't going to do shit for you. Uh, okay, well, thank you. Yes. Yeah. The answer is yes, yes, yes. Get a mentor, get a coach. Okay? You learn faster. What do you think, Seth? I think it, it, they're definitely having that mentor, somebody who can kind of come in and be that wide-angle lens who's a little further down the road than you. And then there's something to kind of what you were saying from the beginning, Brian. Who am I surrounding myself with? Because what's so important is the benefit of being able to know that the people you're surrounding yourself with are on the, are on a similar journey, mm. that they that they have a vision, that they're that they're people who are going to celebrate your wins with you, no matter how big or how small. They're not going to try and downplay them or talk you out of your vision. Like there there's people who are going to be in our lives that are we don't need to make them wrong. But they're gonna want to play it a little bit more in the traditional box. Then they may they may not see, or they want to maybe because it might scare them to do what you're doing. They might want to guard you, caution you, pull you back from that. So it's about who are you surrounding yourself with. So you may have a great mentor, yes, and then. It, as you're moving along and having these large goals for 2024, I picked my two. Mm. Then what are the things I'm going to do this month? What are the things I'm going to do this week? And then who who is in my circle? Who can I talk to that is a peer? Having a, a mentor is one thing, but who is my peer? Mm. Who can We can be accountable to each other. Mm. And if I'm showing up and, and saying like, okay, I'm going to do this this week, and then I'm not doing it, that I'm going to be accountable to report to that person what I'm doing. It's not their job to hold me accountable. It's my job to hold myself accountable. But we together are going to show up and be in the journey together to be a, a witness and, a, and, a, and a, a support to the things we say we're going to do. So, yes, have people in your life who are going to support and help you be accountable to the things that you say you're going to do. Yeah. Yeah, that's good because like recently I had a sit down with a couple of nurses at my business and you find these people are who have worked really hard at Touch and Stefan is that someone has saved enough money and they don't know what to do next. Mm -hmm. They are stuck. Like in their mindset, they know one great thing. They know how to save their money. They know how to show up for themselves to work and make a living. And they have like, they have a beautiful apartment. They have paid it off, uh, like uh, to stay in for the whole year. No, they, 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 but they, they're wondering. I'm scared of doing stocks. Yes. I'm scared of doing crypto. I'm scared of investing in anything. That they they, they have a, a fear of investment. Right. What 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 will be the, their way to kickstart themselves? Well, it depends what they want to do to leverage their money. Mm. Right. Usually, most people they follow something that it feels good to them, even they might not know. Yes. But it feels good to them. Okay. So let's say your friend. She feel good about real estate investing. Mm -hmm. Then now she has to go get a real estate mentor. Mm. She has to start reading books, listen to podcasts, right? Watching YouTube. Yeah. And she need to spend more time learning. There's two curves in the world. There's a learning curve and there's an earning curve. Mm. The more you learn, the more you earn. Yeah. The faster you learn, the faster you earn. Yeah. So your friend right now, the reason why she does an investment now, because she doesn't have enough learning to put her money to work. When she come to Springboard, we can teach her, learn, 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 learn. confidence kicks in. Yeah. Learn, confidence, 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 I'm gonna invest my money. Yes. And that's what they should do. That's exactly right. Because I think you said the, the exact operative word that Thatch picked up on, which was, they don't know what to do. They don't. That is exactly it. Let's know a little more. What did Maya Angelou say? When we know better, we do better. Mm -hmm. Let's know a little more so we can do a little more and then know a little more and then build a little more confidence. It really is just jump in and start getting information. There's no risk in learning. Yeah. It will only better us to learn a little bit. Look more. how you did it, bro. Yes. You didn't jump in and start investing, right? We came over here, no, 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 right? No, no. You were making money. Yes. But what you did, which I see you do today, you spend a lot of time learning. Yes. Learn, 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 learn. Right? Now you got confidence. You can pull the trigger. And most people, they need to learn. They need to spend more time learning. They have learned how to be a good nurse. Yes. That's why they make money. Money. But they need to get more multiple different learn. That's 
Astro. Right? They only got one skill and I call learning nurses. Like, I'm thinking about, like, uh, for example, when I came to Springboard yes. uh, at, the co at the conference, uh, I learned this aspect of, like, uh, building the roadmap to wealth. Yes. So, I, I, I want other people also to take the opportunity which you gave me to learn this roadmap to wealth. I'm going to share a little bit about the roadmap to wealth, and then I'll let Stephanie also share with it. The roadmap to wealth was been a role for me from Vietnamese refugee to someone who worth a million, hundred million dollars today, yes. owning real estate. Uh -huh. I had nothing when I came here from Vietnam, yeah. and today I have lots of real estate, yes. and I have a lot of passive income. But that journey, there was a lot of important points in, the, in my career. One, the first step in that journey, knowledge. knowledge. What, what knowledge do we need? Mm -hmm. We need to do research on the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. We need to know pricing. We need to know comps. Right, we need to know, you know what I mean, uh, 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 who buy, who rent in this area. We need to learn contract. We need to learn, you know what I mean, how to find so, the only everything. That's learning. Once you get knowledge, it's like your friend. Yes. She will start to put it to action. Mm. Action. Knowledge without action, you're still stuck. You're still stuck. Right. When you start taking action with the knowledge, you start making money. Yes. When you start having money. You can start buying real estate. And depending on how many doors you need, you accumulate the number door and you stop. Mm -hmm. For me, it was 15 doors. Mm -hmm. And when I got the 15 door, I went and paid it off. When I got it paid off, I started going back to accumulation mode again. But I always was learning every time. Every day I learned from the time I started 21, still learn today. Yes. I've been in action day in, day out. And I just make more money, more money. And then I just buy more. So I bought house number 16, 17, 18. And then I just kept learning, make more money, buy more houses. And then I just pay down more and I buy more. This has been my journey, how I came from rag to rich. And this is the journey of everybody, but nobody breaks it down so that pe average people can understand this is a marathon journey. This is not a quick, get quick, uh, uh, rich scheme. You come in, you make a million dollar. Mm -hmm. You got to learn how fast someone learns, how fast they get here. And this is what we teach in our program, how to create wealth from A to Z. What do you want to say to that? I think that it is exact. When you were talking, I was thinking of the quote, people overestimate what they can accomplish in one year, but underestimate what they can accomplish in three years or five years or 10 years. That's right. And so I think as you're talking about the roadmap to wealth, a lot of people are going to be like, ooh, okay, that's what my 2024 is about. I'm going to get all this done in 2024. Yes. To recognize the roadmap to wealth as the big picture. Right. And then to ask themselves in 2024, what section, like this is a marathon. So I'm in mile one. Let's say this is the first mile of my marathon. What am I going to accomplish this year? And to not make that progress wrong or not enough, but to really focus on what can I do to get from here to here, knowing that it is the getting the wheel turning can take more effort and that, but to not stop keep going, keep going, keep going. And that's the importance of having those goals, but a short list of goals. So then that becomes their focus, knowing that it's gonna serve this longer roadmap to wealth vision, but to not lose sight of the power and the value of the right now activity, the right now learning, the right now action that can be taken, because right now is what's pre-paving your 10 year, 15. So, Get in, get super clear. Let 2024 be the springboard to it. Yes. Let it be the foundation of it all and to not need to get it all done yeah. in one and shot. And you're not going to be able to get it all done you unless you got small, chunky go. When I bought 15 houses, it took me, you know, 20 years to buy them and pay them off. Yes. So if we were talking about 2024, 2024 is just one of those 20 years. 20 years. By the time they are 20, 20, uh, 2044. That's right. You see what I mean? Yeah. But the problem, most people don't invest in themselves. Yeah. Then they don't want to go learn. They, only want to, they don't want to learn anything new. Mm. They have a skill set to do what they do right now, but they ain't paying them enough money. But instead of going out there and learn another skill set, mm -hmm. they don't do it. 